everybody there for the reading of the word? Huh? Okay, I will be coming from Proverbs, second chapter, verses 1 through 7. My son, if you receive my word and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ears to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for a hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is the shield to those who walk uprightly. May the Lord have risen to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Amen. God, we thank you, Father. For the opportunity, Heavenly Father, we have to come before your throne, Lord. Go ahead and follow Lord, the blessed and Father of the service this morning, Lord. Give us a mind and be able to say yes to your will, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 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 Lord, we ask you, Father, touch the sick and the shut in, Heavenly Father, on a special amount of Lord. Yes, Lord. You live with Heavenly Father, you know people, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Give us a mind to be able to say yes to the things, Heavenly Father, to get peace in your sight, Lord. Yes, Lord. And Lord, let your word, Heavenly Father, Jesus, abide in us, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. And help us, Heavenly Father, Jesus, to be, to be able to approach you, Heavenly Father, Lord, in a final, Heavenly Father, to peace in your sight, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Father, answer our prayers, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. Yes. Give us a mind to be able to say yes to your will, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes. And Lord, we ask you, the Father, to continue, Heavenly Father, to keep us, Heavenly Father, in your care, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, bless us, Heavenly Father, with your blessing for all time. Yes, Lord. These blessings we do ask in your name, Jesus, for your sake, Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't you know, God is.
come back, back to see the grove one more time. Yes. A lot of people would like to come to see the grove this morning, but they can't come. Amen. Because the Lord has called them home. Yes. And you know what? We, we, are, we are so blessed Amen. that we are able to get up and walk around here. Although the building is not full, but we are able to act like it's full. Amen. And the choir is singing like it's full. All right. And then the prayer went up like it's full. Yes. So God is pleased this morning. Yes. He pleased and I'm pleased too. Amen. Yes. I would like to say this morning, so many things are going on. Yes. I have an envelope that I'm passing around. For anybody that have not given me a donation for Reverend West, catch me before you leave here today so I can add everything into the envelope. We know it's a hard time for him and everybody here. Yeah. Yeah. And so Cedar Grove want to do their part. Yeah. I don't know if all you guys remember Sister Gloria Wilson used to drop in on us at the nine men and she would sit on the third bench. She's an old member of Cedar Grove. Yes. She lost her granddaughter this week. And so it's just things that has been hitting me, you know, just hitting yeah. and hitting, but I have to say, God, give me the strength. Yeah. Because he's the only somebody who can help me through all this stuff. Yeah. You know, and I'm just happy that we are here and we can just pray for these people that need our prayers. Yeah. But please make sure they're sincere. Don't just say it because I'm saying pray. Yeah. But pray from your heart for them yeah. for strength because they need that strength right yeah. now. Yeah. You know, and so do we. Yeah. We, we need it too. Yes, Lord. Okay, I know we celebrated Sister Jerry's birthday last week. Amen. And we had a glorious time with her, and we pray that she got everything that the Lord wanted her to have. Not what I wanted her to have, yeah. but what the Lord wanted her to have. Yeah. And for that, we say thank you. We thank you. We want to thank her for the family that came out to celebrate with her. Yeah. It's good. That's the only time you can get the family to come out other than a few. That's a blessing. Yeah. You know, it's good to let, let you know how much you really love them and how much you really care about them. Yeah, that's right. You know, I know on Wednesday night we are supposed to have prayer meeting on Wednesday night. Okay, Pastor will be looking forward to you guys on Wednesday night. Um, we will be celebrating Miss Bryant's birthday on next week. Right. So we can show her how much we love her. All right. I don't want to forget anybody. I don't have to write these birthdays down because oh, they came him all of it. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, just write, put it in your phone because you guys can get everything too. So put it in your phone and next week we will be celebrating this Brian's birthday. All right, all right. Okay. Welcome to the house of the Lord. We the members of Cedar Grove Baptist Church would like to walk, would like to extend a warm welcome to our visitors this morning. We have two back here, I see. We praise God for those who have never been in our midst and also for those who have come back. We know that the word of God will inspire you to return and the word will encourage you this morning. You are welcome to hear praise God in spirit and in trust and lift you up the name of Jesus. We thank you, and please know that you are always welcome to worship with us at Cedar Grove Baptist Church. Our word for today is, God can restore what is broken and change it into something amazing. All you need is faith. And that's what we have to hold on to, that we have the faith. And it's found in Joel 2.25. And now... I think that's all I have to say except it's time for us to do the offering. Bless the Lord. He keeps on doing great things for me. If you know that he's doing great things for you, somebody ought to say amen. 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 I don't know about you, but because I'm here, I got a reason to be excited. I forgot a witness. There are many that wish they could be even in the state that we are in. We may not be where we want to be, but we are still here. And for that reason, we ought to be excited that he's still doing great things for us. Amen. I got a little song in my spirit this morning. But is it okay if I just do a little piece of it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
one go with me. I just, I just, I just feel this little thing in my spirit. It's one of my favorite songs. All right. And it just says, Jesus, you're the center of my
is the dead center. Yes, yes, Lord. yes, Lord. In fact, if you really want to know the truth about it, not only is he the center of my joy, but he is the reason for my joy. Yes. And I found out at an early age that the world didn't give it to me. That's right. That's right. So the world don't have any kind of authority to take it away from me. When he says, you're my joy and yeah. my sorrow, the yeah. world may bring you to the place of sorrow. Yeah. Yeah. But because he's right there in the center of my all in all, I got to yeah. 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 oh, right. 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 to Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. I thank God for you this morning. Amen, Lord. I thank God for Jesus this yeah. morning. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I thank God for these awesome musicians. This yeah. Morning. Yeah. I thank God for that awesome songbird this morning. Yeah. 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 I've been peeking right. over at her. I've been sitting every once in a while. I see her with her phone in her hand. I said, you know what? I said, so this morning she's going to step into a different portion of the water. All right. yeah. Yeah. But I still know that she stepped in the water. The water was cold and chilled her body, but yeah. not her soul. Yeah. 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 Said, I've never been in this water before, but he's given me the ability to stray right. in the water. Yes, yes, so we yes. thank God for you this yes, morning. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. I'm being right. a blessing to his people. Yes, Lord. Amen. Pop, how you feeling this morning? Fine, sir. All right. I see you still dancing the jig. You got to go looking good and stuff. I'm telling you, Pastor West, y'all got to stop coming up in this shop. <laughs> That's all right. Looking good. You're looking good. Hey, Amen. Can I just share and encourage you this morning real quick? I want to start on a little, this is a little short series. Meet me over in the book, The Gospel According to John, chapter number 13. And as you're getting there, in your prayers, I want you to also keep in prayer um, Deacon Bill Williams, who's one of the deacons over at Garden of Praise. He did lose his wife in New York. We are actually memorializing her on this Thursday. Um, they had been married maybe four years. And she took on sick about two years into the marriage. And she rapidly declined. And so for the last year and a half, he has been the epitome of what the Bible says. For a husband to love his wife. Right. Love the church. Right. He never left her side. Right. Hallelujah. He changed her diapers. Yes. He stayed up all night long when she wasn't resting well. Yes. Yes. She had yes. and he, he stopped working and doing all of those things that he wanted to do for himself and yes. sacrificed the way Christ sacrificed yes. for the church. And the night she passed, he went in the room and he, he played with her and she smiled at him and he asked her, are you comfortable? And she nodded, yes. He kissed her on the forehead, went in the living room, and sat down. He said, about 2 o'clock in the morning, the spirit woke him up and said, go check on her. Wow. When he got in the room, she had already slipped away. Wow. And he was enough at peace because he knew who God, he knows who God yes. is. Hallelujah. Yes. Though he felt for a minute that it was unfair that they didn't have the amount of time that they thought they should have had. Yeah. I encouraged him to let him know that whatever her assignment was mm. in his life for those four or five years, yeah. they were married together. Amen. Yes, Lord. It was a job well done. Amen. All right, all right. Yes. Because her job was literally to be in position for him to show other men mm. how Christ loves the church. That is the way that we're supposed yeah. to right. love our wives. There's so many men that would pay to have someone else take care be in a bind, yeah. be bankrupt to have yeah. somebody else take care of yes. they run the streets yes. and do the things that they want that's to do. Right. That's right. He put his life on hold to make yeah. sure that she has yeah. the best care that she Praise can have. So we want to stand with him on this Thursday. Yes. Keep him in prayer. Continue to keep Papa Ford in prayer. He's doing well. Amen. He's doing well. He's getting antsy, so he's almost ready to I wouldn't be surprised if he hobbled through the door right now and he'd be fussing at me that I didn't come to get him. Amen. But I'm going to see if he's ready to get on back down here starting Amen. next Sunday. Amen. Amen. And next Sunday is the first, fifth Sunday of 2022. Amen. Amen. Do us all a favor. 
Tell somebody to get up out their bed on the fifth Sunday. And Amen. Come to yes. Amen. 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 Don't tell them that they're going to have something to eat. Just tell them to come and eat the word. Amen. Amen. Bread of life. Amen. Come and fellowship with the brethren. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So meet me over in the, in the gospel according to John, chapter number 13. We're going to look at two verses here. We're going to begin at verse number 35, 34, I'm sorry. St. John 13, let's begin at verse number 34. And the Bible reads as this, and I'm reading this out of the New King James Version. The Bible says, a new covenant I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciple. If you have love for one another. Yeah. Amen. For a few minutes, I want to use as a subject. When your walk talks, mm -hmm. <coughs> what will it say about you? Mm. Mm. When your walk talks, yes, sir. What will it say All right. about you? Mm. Father, thank you now mm. for this moment that we have to share together. Speak clearly now, oh God, that we your people are here. Recognize, understand, be able to apply, and be just this, lovers of one another, yes. that people may know, not that we're Christians, but know that we are disciples of the Most High. Yes, Lord. And we thank you now. Thank Jesus. you, Lord. When we focus on this passage of Scripture, before we can even get down to 34 and 35, we must go to the prior verses and find how Jesus set the whole tone. Amen. Because as Jesus was speaking to the disciples prior to this, he was simply telling them, he said, that is somebody among us that's going to betray me. Yeah. Now, isn't it amazing that when he gets ready to set the tone for how we should love, you have to eliminate the thing that will prevent us from loving first. All right. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. And there's a lot of us, we have plagues or we have uh, this fungus in our lives too. We have the people that hate on everything that we do. We have yeah, people right. that feel like they're supposed to be the one. We have people that's always looking for a reason to, to, to motivate others to not do what's right. I wish I had a way yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's always one in the crowd, one in the crowd, one in the crowd. Baby girl comes up and she sings from her heart and God is pleased and the angels are rejoicing but as somebody sitting in the corner of the church with their jaws tight can't hold a no 25,000 gallon bucket carried by a bulldozer but yet feeling that they can sing better. Well baby it's not that you can sound better than her but it's your heart in the same place that her she's singing to glorify God and when she lifts up the name of Jesus the Bible says he'll draw but when you want to get up to impress people, you'll find out that you're not lifting up, nor is he drawing. I wish you had a way. But now Jesus had to eliminate, he had to eliminate that poison that was going to prevent love from being shown and prevent people from knowing whose we are. Hallelujah. So he spoke to Judas and he told Judas, he says, whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. In other words, you ain't got to tell me what your motive is when I know that your walk is already talking. Come on. Hallelujah. Now you need to observe some people that's in your life and you need to see how they're walking because I guarantee you their walk is speaking loud enough for you to notice whether or not they're in position to be in your life to exhibit love or they're in your life to exhibit hate. But whatever it is, you ought to make sure that you look at how loud their walk Jesus now sets the tone and then he gets to the place where he allows Judas to know, yes, whoever you are. He didn't call him by name, but Amen. yet he told him, he said, whatever you're going to do, do it quick. And isn't Amen. it amazing that when you call a spade a spade, that a spade will jump up and get up out of the way Amen. simply Amen. because it does not want to be exposed. They have not been talking about the pink elephant in the room. Ain't it amazing yeah. that you ain't got no pink folks in the room but the moment you say a pink elephant. 
You even got people in the room the size of an elephant. Why do you start talking about them? I wish I had somebody in here. And they get up and get nervous and they get, they get antsy and, and they want to move simply because they believe at this point that you have been exposed. Well, I come by to tell you that you don't have to expose anything or anybody because the Holy Spirit is good at that all by itself. Yeah. 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 So when we get down after he explained this and Judas got up and he left up out of there, then Jesus was like, okay, now we can get down to business. Ain't that amazing? Amen. And then he encouraged those that were there. He told them, he says, listen, a new commandment I give you. The thing that got me when I began to look at this is this. How do you give a new commandment from a commandment that had already been given? Amen. Yes. Yes. But we have to look at the context of how he gave it because he did not give them a new commandment. But what he did is establish in, a, in full context what that first commandment was. Now the new portion of the commandment was, I told you hmm. what to do. Now I'm going to tell you how to do it and why you're doing what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Got a yeah. So he says, a new commandment I give to you. And he's speaking, listen, he's speaking to the disciples. Uh -huh. But now you know that he's about ready to leave here. So he has to give instructions to the disciples yeah. so that they can carry on the mantle. And I want you to understand that when you do as Jesus does and you walk as Jesus Jesus did. You don't have to be a part of the fold to make sure that you get impacted by the fold. Amen. And if you're impacted by the fold, then you will eventually become part of the fold. Amen. But a lot of folks won't come into the fold because most of the folks that are walking is not lining up with the way that they're talking, but their walk is speaking loud. Amen. Have I got a witness? We have too many people that are in church that say that they're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, yeah. but the walk that they have is they're full of everything but Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. If I got about three witnesses in yeah. <laughs> Amen. And so now we find that he says, I'm giving you a new commandment. Then he tells them that you love one another. Don't just love one another, yeah. but I need you to love them as I have loved you. Yeah. And then we have to look at how did he love us that makes him want to come and tell us that we need to love the way he loved yeah. us. Yeah. So we've got to examine how he loved us. Amen. I want you to understand that when he was sitting at the right hand of the Father, he was not nominated to come down here on our behalf, yeah. but rather he looked at his Father and says, I'll go. You need somebody. I'll go to see about them. Yeah. And in doing that, he already knew that a whole lot of us wouldn't accept him, but he still came onto the earth to be able to give everybody the same opportunity, although everybody wasn't going to embrace the same right. opportunity. If that's not love, I don't know what it is. I'm going to come down to a crazy place where I know folks is going to talk about me, spit on me. I know that folks is not going to accept me. Folks are going to lie on me. Pastor West, I'm going to go to a place where folks are going to be trying to hoo ride and gang bang on me. But I'm going to go and love them in spite of because the mission that is set before me is I need to know when I leave here that the people that see me in the flesh understand that the spiritual dynamic that's going on with me will rest and reside in you if you can embrace who I am and I am love. The Bible lets us know that love, 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 love is the thing that covers a multitude of sin. But in order for you to love this agape love, in order for you to love that way, you first got to accept him as your personal savior simply because he is love. And if he is the epitome of love, how can you love somebody the way somebody loved you if you don't even know who the person is that loves you? Have I got a witness? So now he says, I want you to love. He came down into a sin sick world. Yeah. He walked this earth. He walked this earth and he loved beyond himself. He loved beyond people. He loved because he understood what I came here for is bigger than what y'all got going on right now. And I'm giving you an opportunity to turn it around by what? Loving you in spite of. This yeah. kind of love yeah. that he's speaking of is this. I want to love you this way. 
Because I want you to understand that this ain't got nothing to do with how I feel. Hallelujah. This kind of love ain't got nothing to do with how you make me feel. This kind of love ain't got nothing to do with what you can do for me. This kind of love. This is the kind of love that I'm going to exhibit. And this kind of love is about building you up. This kind of love is allowing you to see that no matter who you are and what you've done, you're still capable of being loved. This is the kind of love that is saying, I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to suffer. This is the kind of love that says, in spite of everything that you have done to me or anybody else, I'm still going to show you that God loves you and so do I. So in that, I've got to understand now that every day I've got to pray and ask God to give me the strength to do what? To be, keep my mouth closed, keep my ears and my spirit open to do what? Not respond, not react, but respond. Amen, amen. Because when I react, I just move on emotions. Mm -hmm. But when I respond, I allow the Holy Spirit to give me something to think about. And then I move. Now I give him the power to shift Amen. the whole atmosphere. Have I got a witness? You also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples. Now, mm. now mm. he's simply saying this. I want y'all to love each other. Yes. But I don't want you to love each other because y'all like each other. Mm. That's the only reason. But I want you to love each other because I've loved you in spite of who you are. Some of y'all is raggedy. <laughs> Hallelujah. We just got rid of the one that was going to, that, that's just turning me over to some folk for a couple of pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. But I love it. Mm -hmm. He just can't rock with us because he's not going to allow people to know that I'm his disciple. Amen. I mean that he's my disciple. How can he be my disciple, but yet he's turning me in to be able to die over something that he believes is greater than me? Mm -hmm. At that moment, Judas allowed for that little bit of silver, the few little shackles that he got. It allowed him to, that allowed for him to say, this right now is my God. Mm, hallelujah. Because I'll sacrifice the God who's going to die for me for this little stuff right here that can't do nothing for me. Amen. Have I got a witness? But Jesus is simply saying, I want you guys to love one another. And he goes on to say that people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. But I want you to get to check this out. Because when we get down into Matthews, this is when he was speaking of this before. Matthews 22, 37 through 39. It simply says, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with your whole heart and with yeah, your soul and with mind. all of your mind. Yeah. This is the first and great commandment. Mm -hmm. Then he says in 39, and the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah, yeah. And then when you look at that, you say, love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to hurt somebody. <laughs> That's all right. all right. You got the keys to the car, so just to get out of here. Amen. Amen. Y'all can make sure you pull off and don't go back. We, we, we may have to hit we may have to hit floors. We're running out. We got the boat on, so we ain't robbed nothing. We just run fast. So listen, he says, love your neighbor as yourself. That's right. And he specifically said that because I don't know who tell too many people that don't love yourself really. Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, some of us love us, uh, ourselves so good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> watch this. Some right. of us love ourselves so good that we, we think that we are prettier and cuter than that's we are. Right, we, right. we, 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 we want to get ourselves all together. We look in the mirror more throughout the course of the day than we look in our body. Yeah, we, 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 yeah. we, we, we want so much for ourselves, we'll go broke looking good. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, matter of fact, we, 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 we like ourselves so much and we love ourselves so much that we're going to make sure that we treat ourselves every once in a while. We're going to make sure that, that how many folks get their manicures and their pedicures? And them, how many folks be liking to go down to the Glen and the Ivy? There's a folk in here that like fine dining because you love yourself like that. Have I got a witness? You're not going to put nothing in yourself that's going to hurt yourself. You're not going to put nothing on yourself that's going to deplete who you are. You're not going to buy yourself something that well, I never know. You go buy it stuff that ain't gonna fit. I'm glad I ain't got nobody up in here that wearing clothes and their clothes too little for you. Amen. Praise the Lord for coming up in church. Two sizes too small, baby. That's nightclub wear. Don't come up in here. So, so, so you love yourself real good. So if you love yourself real good, and the Bible is telling you, I need you to love them. The same way you love yourself. You're not going to deny yourself no food. So why are you going to deny your neighbor? You're, you're not going to deny yourself no glass of water when you're thirsty. So why would you deny your neighbor? You're not going to deny paying your bill. So if you got a little extra, why would you not 
help your brother and your sister. This is the kind of love that Jesus is speaking of. I want you to make sure that the way you love them represents how you love yourself because in all essence, now you allow the people to see you got enough of me on the inside of you to be able to look past what other folks say and do exactly what I said. Love your neighbor. Love each other the way I've loved you. I wish I had somebody that understands loving somebody the way Christ loves us. It means that you've got to give up some stuff. You've got to say some stuff that you wouldn't normally say you've got to move in a direction that you wouldn't normally move. You've got to encourage when you're in the midst of being discouraged. You've got to lift up even when you feel that you have been torn down. You've got to know that your love should be in place to help build somebody up, especially at the time that they need it the most. Like when the Bible talks about the parable about the Good Samaritan, when it spoke about how, how you had the priest or the prophet walk down the street and seen this man laying on the side of the road. He's all, all clothes all ripped up. He's hungry. And the man walks on the other side of the street. Yeah, yes. Then it says you have a teacher that's coming down the street and does the same thing. But then you have Pastor West. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on up again, somebody. Pastor West came down. It didn't matter what he was going through. But he seen the man laying on the side of the road. And he got the man up. Didn't nobody ask Pastor West how much money he had in his pocket. But he took the little that he had and put the man in a place and nurtured him. And then told the man in the end, he says, just let him stay here for a few days. Get him together. And when I come back, is talking about. I need you to know that your money ain't your money so why are you holding on to it like you need it? Your food is not your food so why are you holding on to it the way you are? I said come and take care of the homeless. Take care of those that are less than you are. Take care of the widow and the orphan. And you're so busy trying to take better care of yourself but if you really love me I need you to make sure that you think of them the way you think of you because in the essence of it all they'll know that you belong to me because yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. Hmm. I got a witness. Yeah. Lord. This kind of love is the love that God speaks of as the godly love. Hmm. The love with no limits. Yes. The love with no conditions. Yes. yes. Have I got a witness? All right, all right. You must understand that your walk talks. Yeah. And your walk will say some things about you that your mouth will never ever say. All right, all right. Oh, I wish I had a witness. All right, now. We find folk right now that come to church, and I like to use this particular analogy because we have, I say, Sister Faith Almighty, who sits up on the front row. Amen. She's been on the front row, Pastor West, for about the last 37 years. She sits in the same place. She gets to church at the same time. She has the same movement. She's been getting her the same Bible. She, matter of fact, she got the same hat that she wears every first Sunday. I wish Amen. I had somebody. Y'all know who she is, and if you come and sit in her seat, she's going to give you the same old argument about you being my seat. As if she had sat back and donated money for a pew that got her name on it. Come on in here. She'll sit there and she'll come and she'll tell you about how you're supposed to have faith. The size of a mustard seed. You ain't supposed to go through nothing and not believe that God can and then will. And then there's somebody that has been watching her, not in the church, but they have been watching her when she leaves the church. And she's the same one that the moment trouble comes her way, she becomes unglued and unstitched at every portion of her body, trying to figure out how I'm going to get out of this and how am I going to get out at that particular point. Now your walk is saying that I really don't believe in the same faith that I'm trying to encourage you to. Yeah, yeah. Somebody that's trying to get closer to God Now looking at your walk Now yeah. they don't want to believe in the God That you say you serve yeah. Because you're not exhibiting in your walk The same thing that you're speaking in your But Tony yeah. Evans said this brother. He said this He says you'll leave people You'll leave people further with the tongue in your shoes Than you yeah. will with the tongue in your mouth yeah. He said that I want yeah. you to understand That yeah. your walk speaks louder Because people will do what they see you do Faster than they'll do what they hear you say yeah. Talking loud and saying absolutely nothing. You don't believe me? Here, look at First Corinthians 13, chapter chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. It says this: Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, and here, here we go with that love again. Here, here we go with that love again. Not just this superficial love, but this love that looks beyond the the, the faults of people. I have become sounding brass or 
clinging symbols. In other words, if I ain't got no love, it don't right. matter what I'm doing, Amen. it is absolutely worthless. Have I got that? Yeah. I have become sounding brass or clinging symbols. And though I have the gift of prophecy uh -huh. and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, yeah. I am nothing. All right, Verse all 3 right. says, and though I bestow all goods to feed the poor. Listen, uh -huh. it didn't say I feed the poor. Uh -huh. Amen. It said I bestow the goods to feed the poor. Yeah. And if I don't have love, I'll just keep bestowing and never. <laughs> Come on, yeah. It's almost I'll be pack radish. Have I got a witness yeah. up in here? Yeah. I have it, but I won't be willing to use it simply because. But I'll use it if other people are looking because I want to glorify myself. Yeah. But it ain't about me. It's about God because he says if I love one another the way he loves me, then others will know that I am his disciple and that he is the one that is in control of it all. And if I want to glorify God, I need to take what I got. Listen, yeah. God gives us blessings in order that we may be a blessing. Right. And if we don't bestow, if we bestow the blessings and don't issue the blessings out, then how much more is God going to bless us? I, I need you to know, a closed hand can't get nothing in and it can't get nothing out. And a hard heart cannot get any love in and it cannot get any love out. But when you got the love of Jesus, it's nothing that's clogging the pathway of you loving the way Christ loves us. So every so once in a while, you need to go back and get in your word and you need to read some stuff about what he did for you to be verified that he really loved us beyond ourselves. Because I don't know, can I say this? Yeah. All right. I don't know now, Negro, right now, that will go up on any kind of cross to save me and my sins. He didn't know that. Matter of fact, I don't know a Negro right now that will even lend me a piece of his EBT card because I'm hungry. Have I got a witness? Let alone die <laughs> a cruel death simply because he wants to make sure that folks know I love him enough to help get him to the next level. Amen. Have I got a witness? Pastor West, in this time that we're living in right now, mm. you're at a spot right now where you ain't calling on nobody, but yet you would believe that the people that say that they love you yeah. shouldn't have to call you and ask you, what can I do? But folks should show up and just begin to start helping you through the process because if I love you like Christ loves the church, yeah. I don't need to know what you're going through to know that I'm going to help you through. All right. All right. Have I got a witness? Yeah. I may not have a dollar to give you. I may not have a truck to pull some stuff, but I may just have a shoulder to cry on or an ear to listen. Yeah. And if I can come with a heart of love and just be in the midst that God may take over, yeah. then yeah. other folks will know the union of love that we have and they will know that God is in the midst and they will know the God that we serve yeah. is emulated by the way we walk because of our but if we really want to live and do what God is telling us to do, he sits and says this in verse 3, he says, And though I bestow all goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, yeah. it profits me nothing. Yeah. 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 Yes. And the key thing to that is, it profits me nothing. That's right. Right. The Bible says, what does it profit a man? Mm -hmm to gain the whole world yes. and lose his soul. Yeah. I don't want to profit anything on this side of heaven right. other than establishing whose I am. Right. Because what I need here, I want folks to say that he loved the Lord with everything in him. Yeah. And he exhibited that in everything that he did. Yeah. I seen him going down the street talking to the smelly man. Yeah. The one that everybody walked past because he smelled so bad and he yeah. looked so dirty. Yeah. But not only did I see him speaking to him, but I seen him feed him and I seen him shake his hand. Yeah. And he didn't do it when anybody, when there was a whole lot of people looking. But he just walked up to the man and began to speak and didn't think nobody saw. But I come by to tell you that it ain't about promoting myself before man, but it is doing what God told me to do whether somebody is looking or not. Because at the end of the day, when I found out is man may not be looking but God is looking all of the time and I need you to know that when he calls my name all I want to hear him say is well done my good and faithful servant you've been faithful over a few things 
thing. Crown yes. won't make you ruler over much. And can I just share this with somebody real quick? And I hope this really, really helps you. I need you to understand that the moment that you go and help somebody because of the love of God that's in your heart, that don't look nowhere near you, sometimes God is giving you a glimpse as what you are one step away from by making the wrong decision yourself. Right. Because just because you think that you got yourself a little bitty house and you got yourself two packs of meat in your freezer and you got yourself a pack of black eyed peas and not a can of black eyed peas that you arrived. But baby, let me tell you something. You're just one bad decision away from being on the streets where you need somebody to help you yourself. So don't take for granted that you already arrived because I need you to know that the same God that giveth is the same God that will take it away. And if you really want to love the Lord, you say, God, I don't have much. But what I do have, because you blessed me with it, I'm willing to share it with somebody else. Yeah, yeah. That's letting somebody know that I am a disciple of the Most High yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. And at the end of the day, baby, our walk is supposed to let people know that no matter what we go through, he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In my physical walk, in my mental walk, but especially in my spiritual walk, people need to know that I am a child of God, and because of Him, I live, and in Him, I have. So now I need you to look at this as I get ready to close this for this week. I want you to look at this. I want you to look at this. That if we go down to verse number four in First Corinthians thirteen, we'll look at what it says. It says. It says. It says. It says. Love mm -hmm. suffers long. Yes, yes. And is kind. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in that, I want you to understand long suffering is something that the enemy will try to tempt you with over and over again. Hallelujah. Because we have this thing pop that called people get on my last nerve. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Because there's somebody in here right now that somebody got on your last nerve just this week. Well, baby, I come by to tell you that if it was your last nerve, you wouldn't be here no longer. Yeah. It's not your last nerve. It's just a nerve that you've allowed them yeah. to get on. Yeah. And when I, when, when I really want to explain this to you, they ain't on your nerve. You're just on your own nerve. Yeah. Simply because if God has given you the ability to love past, then you ought to make sure that the love of God exudes from you. So the one that wants to get on your nerve, God will turn their heart the opposite direction. Yeah. But it seems as if when people get on your nerve, that's when you don't want to suffer. They make me sick. Baby. And I need you to know that somebody is looking at how you're walking. And they're saying, if that is Christianity, I don't want to be like that. But suffering long says, talk about me if you want to, but I'm still going to love you. Scandalize my name, but I'm still going to love you. Take away from me still and all of that, but I'm still going to love you. You can sit back and tell folks that I'm something that I'm not, but I'm still going to love you. Because at the end of the day, I need somebody that's looking from afar at what Christianity is supposed to look like and say, I don't know exactly what a Christian is, but if that's what it is, I want what he got. Ah, I need somebody to know that when you love Jesus and you love people the way Jesus loved you, that's when God will turn around and do some things in the midst through you that others will know who God is because of the walk that you walk. It says that love suffers long and is kind. We have so many unkind folk in church. Hallelujah. We got folks in church that's always got a negative attitude. We got folks in church that's always frowning down their nose at somebody. We got yeah. folks that's all, you got more wrinkles in your forehead than a shih tzu dog. I wish I had a little up in here. Ah, jaws always tight like you woke up with a whole mouth full of helium. Yeah. You're coming in here always uptight, mean, and nasty. Amen. But the Bible Amen. tells us that we ought to suffer long in our love and be kind. Yeah. And being yeah. kind is simply having a kind word. Being kind, if, if I can't say nothing at all, I'll just smile and nod my head. Yeah. And I need you to know if your attitude is nasty, you need to ask God to give you a new, new, new attitude all before right. you get to church. Yeah. Because some folks will never get what God has for them because they can't get past your unkindness. Yeah. 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 But it tells us that love suffers long and yeah. is kind. Yeah. Love does not envy. Yeah. There's so many jealous folk in the church. Amen. Oh. Amen. 
<laughs> there's folk in the church. There's folk that won't come to church because you playing the organ and they think they're supposed to play the organ. Right. Yeah. Don't know a key on the organ. They ain't never seen an organ, but swear up and down. They supposed to be a well, she up there. Oh, I don't know what to be. No, why are you being jealous instead of celebrating with me? You yeah. get your own man. But the Bible lets us know that when we can be happy for one another in their blessing, we just simply set ourselves up to get our blessing. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but whatever you went through for God to bless you the way he blessed you, yeah. I just need to thank him for what you did and how he showed you how, how happy he is with you. Yeah. Because whether he blessed me or not, he's already blessed me more than enough. Yeah. And if I got up to see your blessing, I still got eyes to see. Right. If I saw your blessing, I still got a heart to rejoice. Yeah. If I saw your blessing, I still got a chance to get me one whether I expect it or not. Yeah. Because God is still the God that right. sees all, that knows all, and that does all. Yeah. So now, I, I ain't got time to be jealous because when I'm jealous, then that means I got less time to give God praise. Right. I got less time to walk this walk of love. I got yeah. less time to make my walk speak loud for who Jesus is. I got, when I'm jealous, then I miss the opportunity for me to fulfill my assignment. And my assignment is to show somebody else how I can praise God for what he did for you. Yeah. In spite of the condition that I'm going yeah. for myself. Yeah. Love yeah. does not envy. It says love does not parade itself. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ah, Mother Maddie, ain't it amazing that folk yeah. get up in here and sway up and down, they've arrived. Yeah. They got their new cute outfit on. They walk up in the church. They then had a service. They only come to church when they own program. Amen. Amen. Up in here. Or when they got a chance to speak or sing a song. And they come up in here after they done sung and folks just say, hey, praise the Lord, you sound so good. And next Sunday they come up in here and they just <laughs> Amen. And sitting down on the front row with their legs crossed and acting as if Jesus and the disciples were supposed to come in and fan them and say, Hosanna, Hosanna. <laughs> Baby, you better understand that, the, that, that you running around parading yourself is not exhibiting what your walk should be talking. Amen. But yet it's telling folk that if this is the kind of love and if this is the kind of Christian that you're supposed to be, I don't want no parts of that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen puffed up Christians? You don't yeah. know if they puffy Cheetos or skinny Cheetos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know if they're a puffer fish or who they are, but it seems as if they got a little accolades, brother, and their head is too big to get through the door. Have I got a witness? Just all puffed up because somebody want me to come and speak at their church. So what? Somebody want me to speak on behalf of Jesus at the park. Amen. The difference in between me and you, most folks is going to feel the love of God at the park because I'm doing it out of the auspice of love that I have for Jesus. Amen. And you're just going to try to impress somebody else. Baby, your walk speaks Amen. very loud. Amen. And then it lets us know in verse number five that love does not behave Rudely. I have a little thing that I share, Pastor West, with ushers. If, baby, if you got a nasty disposition about yourself, then relieve yourself of the position of usher this morning. Because when people come through the door, they don't care about what you going through. They're coming in to get a word from the Lord. And your rude and nasty attitude at the door may block them from getting what God had prepared for them that morning. What am I trying to say? That the ushers are the windows and the doors of the church. That when they come through and they see you at the door, then they get a perception of what the pastor and the church is supposed to look like. And if the ushers is rude and the pastor let the rude usher be at the door, then the pastor must be rude too. But I tell folks this all the time, Pop, that if you are an usher and you got an attitude, and most of the ushers that got attitudes is the one that was in the club with the cute outfit on the night before anyway. And they had the cute outfit on and somebody stepped on their cute shoes and, and they still mad about them stepping on their cute shoes that they just bought and wore for the first time. And now Sunday morning they have to go still mad. And, they, and the person who they offended at the club is now the person that came to church because they want to get their life. And your rude self is at the root. At the, uh, come on here. You at the back door and they don't want to come in because they just visited with you at the club the night before and now you're saying holy thank you Jesus. Yes baby you cannot be rude. It says that it does not seek his own and it is not provoked. 
<laughs> Some of us get provoked real easy. Amen. Yeah, don't say amen when I say out of, the, out of the fullness of my heart. Don't raise your hand when the Lord is using. How do you know the Lord is using you? If you're so busy watching people with their hands up or their hands down, and you're emulating or you're believing that the move of God is contingent on people raising their hand, then maybe your motives was wrong from the first place. You're being provoked by the enemy because when you got up there, the enemy already knew that your intentions was wrong. But I come by to tell you something. If you never lift up your hands, and if you never say amen, if you never clap, it don't mind me none, because if God sent me up here, I'm doing it to glorify God and not glorify man. And there's always somebody in the crowd that don't praise God the same way everybody else does. And just because they didn't lift up their hands and shout and say hallelujah don't mean that they didn't get him. And if they left there and God moved on their life because I was faithful enough in spite of the folk that's looking at me. Yeah, yeah. To give God my best because he loves me. My walk is speaking very loud. And other folks would say, boy, folks sat on him, but he showed saying his heart out. Amen. Folks was looking at him crazy, Pastor West, but he still preached like he was a thousand folk up in there and everybody was shouting. I need you to know that because of the love of Christ, I'm not worried about what man does to me, but I am going to do what God tells me to do to live through him. I'm going to love you in spite of what you say. I'm going to love you in spite of what it looks like. I'm going to love you in spite of how much you discourage me. I'm going to love you in spite of the circumstance. I'm going to love you if you don't know who I am or if you do. I'm going to share with you the blessings that God gave me if the Holy Ghost needs me to do it. And I come by to tell you one thing. It doesn't matter who's looking. Because just because it ain't a crowd, it doesn't mean that somebody ain't looking. And I come by to tell you, Brother Bryant, that everywhere you go, somebody is looking. Everything that you do, somebody is looking. Somebody reads their Bible and may not have a relationship yet. And when they get to this scripture in John, and it says to love your brother, love everybody the way I love you. It's simply saying when Jesus came to the earth in his spiritual nature, he knew us all before we were created. In his physical nature, he didn't know us one from another. But that didn't deplete the way he loved us. Have I got a witness here? He had the power to heal. And it didn't matter if you were a follower or not. Love says that if I'm here and I want the power of God to move, I just need to do what God tells me to do and let God do the rest. Some of the folk, especially the man that had all the demons on the inside. Remember when Jesus went across in the boat and the man that walked up to him full of the demons. Jesus looked at him and said, what is, what is your name? And the Bible says that the demon spoke, but it respected the power of God that was inside of him. And it was only because of the love that Jesus displayed when he approached him. I wish I had a witness. And Jesus said, what is your name? And the Bible says that the demon says that my name is Legion. Because there is a bunch of us on the inside. Yes. And because of the love that Jesus displayed, the demons just simply say, I know you're about to cast us out, but don't cast us into the abyss. But why don't you cast us over there somewhere? And because Jesus loved him, the power of God working through him, he cast the demons out into a herd of swine that jumped over into the water. But what I need you to know about that is that the disciples was in the boat watching exactly what Jesus was doing. So therefore, when Jesus said that you ought to love one another the way that I loved you, I know their minds went back to the moment he saved the demon-possessed man. I know that their eyes and their minds went back to when Jesus spit in the mud and rubbed the mud on the blind man's eyes. 
Christ and told him to wash over in the pool. I know that when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, I know that when Jesus healed a multitude of people, I know that when Jesus took two fish and five loaves of bread, he didn't know everybody that he fed, but the Bible says that he fed a multitude. Have I got a witness in here? There were some people there that did not know who he was, but they know that it had to be the power of the Lord, because nobody else was going to go and do things on that magnitude. What am I trying to say over here this morning, Cedar Grove? Your walk, it speaks loud. Your walk will speak loud. I need for your walk to say that I am a child of the Most High God. Folks talk about you, but your walk to say I love you, and it ain't nothing you can do. Yes, Lord. 
will say some things that your mouth will never have All right. Amen. All right, All right. All right. All right to that. Yes, yes. Somebody do something. And it's, it's bad when, you, when you're a preacher, you're out here looking. Amen, amen. Because the thing is, it's most folks are looking this way. Yeah. So if you sit beside or behind somebody, you'll never see what I see. That's amen, right. hallelujah. Right. Even when we sitting up here, amen. and we're looking out, yes. Mother Bryant, somebody said, we're going to celebrate today. <laughs> we're going to celebrate Deacon Mike, Brother Mike. <laughs> Just because he got on a critical mask. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> somebody gonna have it. But he didn't say they celebrated him because he had on a critical mask. <laughs> they never opened up their mouth. Amen. Mother, but the, Amen. or the neck roll, or the posture. And it or the, <laughs> yeah. What happens if somebody in the church that was coming to get something from the church just happened to glance over at you when your expression said yeah. what it said? Amen. Hallelujah. And then you got up and testified about how good the Lord is. Amen. My Lord. Hey. Your walk has spoken. Yeah. Hey. And that person is offended mm -hmm. because it didn't exhibit. Right. If you don't like what somebody said or what somebody did, you got to go home and practice how to hold your facial expression. Amen. Amen. No, let me not say that because then you become a professional, hold your face expression. <laughs> no, you need to go before the Lord and put it on the altar and say, God, I need you to remove that. Yes, Lord. 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 Because it's not about what they do to make me feel good. Hmm. It's about what they do to give you the glory. All right, all right. And if they don't do it correctly, that ain't got nothing to do with me. That's what right. you and them. But help me to maintain, to be what I need to be, to love in spite of. Yes. So when people see my walk, they hear your voice say, that is my child. Amen. All right, all right. Amen. All right, all right. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. We ain't got to promote us. Mm. Jesus is in, permission, is in position to promote yes, himself right. through us. Because right. yes, right. yes, right. that's the only promoting. Heaven mm. is the only thing that needs to be promoted. That's it. Mm -hmm. And our job is not to be in position to make people happy. Our job is to be in position to get them lined up with what the yes. Spirit of God is. Yes. And the way we're supposed to do that is to love each other yes. the way Christ yes. Yes. loves yes. us. Yes. That's right. Have I got a witness? Yes. yes. We need to go and ask God. Lord, re help me re-examine who I am, who's yes, I am, yes, yes. because at the end of the day, what I do, I want to make sure it brings you all of the glory. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> Have I got a witness? Yes. It don't take much to exhibit love through your walk. That's right. Amen. But what it takes is this. It takes a commitment to identify that it's because of God and not because of us. Yes. Amen, amen. And us being on the earth, mm. it ain't for us to make a name for ourselves. That's right. But it is for us to uplift the name of Jesus. All right, yeah. all right, yes. Yeah. So yeah. that we can do our part to help us out. Yes, yes. With all eyes closed and all heads bowed, <laughs> this is the time of the service where give an opportunity to those that may not know Christ for the pardon of their sins. You may want to dedicate your life and give your life to Christ today. Or you may want to rededicate your life and say, I need to make sure that I'm in right position so that God gets the glory out of my life. Yes, Lord. If that's you, just simply raise your hand. Hallelujah. Amen. The next call is for you. That may want to join Cedar Grove. Hallelujah. We'd love for you to be part of us as we would love to be your family. Yes. Amen. Right. you just raise your hands where you are. Amen. As I see there is none, but there is yet still room at the cross. Father, we praise your name. Yes. We glorify you now. Yes. And God, we ask you to help us to re-examine ourselves. Yes. Yes. Because we want to be careful and know, God, that the love of who you are, the way you yes. loved us, that it is exuding through our entire being. Yes, Lord. That if we haven't been doing it correctly up until this point, God, that from this point on, we'll love each other the way you loved us. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. 
that will encourage each other, that this love will be unconditional, that it will not be attached to our emotions and our feelings and our flesh, but it be a spiritual type of love, Father God, that exudes the power and the glory and the appreciation for who you are in our lives. God, we don't need recognition from people to come and tell us, thank you for loving them the way we do. Yes. We just want you to get the glory that they may come and say, God, thank you for showing me that there are people that love you. Yes. And from what I saw, God, I see that they're, that they're sold out for you and that you are still the most high God, sitting yes. high looking low. Yes. yes. And that we must still come to know you for the, and, and accept you for the pardon of our sins and that we must have you as a part of our life in our hearts in order for us to even make it yes. into the kingdom of God. Yes. So God, help us to be more like you. Yes. Help us to love each other more like you. Yes. Help us to encourage each other more like you. Yes. Yes. And even more so, God, help us to not be dependent on responses and reactions of others. Yes. But know, God, that if we're sincere in heart, we can lead more people to you with the tongue in our shoes yes. than we can with the tongue in our mouth. Yes. yes. We know and understand, God, that sometimes our walk will be the loudest sermon or the most profound sermon that we'll ever preach. Yes. Let us understand, God, that many of us will never be called as preachers and pastors and evangelists to the pulpit, but we are all held at a position to deliver the gospel. Yes. And some of us will deliver it through encouraging one another, but some of yes. us will deliver it through the way that we walk and the way that we love. So let us be at a place, Father God, where we are intentional yes. about how we love. Hallelujah. And that we are intentional about how we serve. Yes. So that you receive all the praise, the honor yes. and the glory. Yes. Yes. For it in the name of Jesus the Christ. Jesus. That we ask it all. Yes. Yes, Lord. Now we ask you, Father God, to go with us. Yes. Be the joy in every soul. Yes, Lord. Be the peace in every mind. Yes. Be the love in every heart. Yes, Lord. As we prepare to leave this place with never thy presence, yes. we give you praise. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Before we leave, let's remember Wednesday night, let's come in and have a good old fashioned prayer meeting.